Jing Liu is here, and I've been testing her for a couple days now, playing Star Rail a ton, and she's broken. She is definitely one of the best characters in the game, probably up there with the very best damage dealers with Dan Hung himself, and I am super stoked on that because she has one of my favorite designs in the entire game. I would like to preface a couple things, and that is that my account is a subjective account, right? I don't have every single character built. I have characters built at varying different levels, and so I have to use kind of a bit of feel you know i know people hate feels crafting but there is something to say for experience so i'm not trying to say that i have you know the objective right answer on this but out of all the content i've consumed and out of testing her out versus a pretty good selection of dps's i've tested her versus kafka versus zila and versus dan hung so those are kind of my reference points you can reference that to whatever you have on your account we're going to look over my jing liu my kafka my zila and my dan hung so we can compare their various investment levels so we can pro get a comparison and then I'll tell you how they feel at those investment level and what other characters I'm using to support them. And then you can judge what that means for you and for your account. So starting with Jing Liu, obviously she's level 76 out of 80. She's using her signature light cone. I went and got her light cone because I don't, I only have one destruction light cone other than this. Uh, that would be Clara's light cone. I have, I haven't yet crafted the Herda one because I'm using all my pulls for Branya. So um, her light cone, her talents are 888 and I've almost completed her traces. I'm just missing one that I have to wait till I get to level 84 and then for relics um i only have level 12 um, headpiece level 12 boots uh, i have a crit damage body piece with an attack percent and some crit rate in there it's pretty good body piece my speed boots have some nice crit damage i'm running an ice damage rope with some crit rate some hp some attack no crit damage unfortunately and i'm running an energy regeneration uh, rope i know that attack percent could be considered more optimal i like having her ultimate up more often and obviously often i'm using her with ting yun so i'm getting extra energy regeneration there so i get to use her alt more often than i normally would i'm i know it's not optimal i'm just doing it for fun i like having it better and it is viable even if it's not optimal and then obviously we're at e0 so that's where my jing liu's at for comparison my kafka 80 out of 80 using good night sleep well at s3 um seven seven eight you know her traces aren't quite as filled out as jing liu's are i should probably work on that i will and then relics she's got the full quantum set with some attack speed attack effect hit rate attack with speed some break effect and then speed boost Lighting damage with some speed and HP and attack and attack. So nothing crazy on the Kafka. Den Hung using Clara's light cone at 8, 7, and 7. Get those up a little bit for the future so that they're at least even. And he's rocking the four piece the two piece Relent Arena and four piece Wastelander with these pieces. So pretty nice. He's probably got the best artifact of the bunch. Um, they're nothing crazy, but they're probably better than my other guys' pieces. Of course, he's at E0. And then my Zila, she has her signature light cone with a little bit more invested traces, actually. And and also some pretty good relic compared to my other characters. Maybe she's the best built. I'm not sure. Let me know if you think my Dan Hung or my or my Zila are the best built. And of course, she's at Z0. So overall, what is my feeling? Well, she hits like an absolute truck. And there's a couple things that I like about her that you don't necessarily think about at first. And that's that her damage windows come in multiple hits. So when, when Dan Hung um, attacks, he basically has one big nuke of damage. But when you're using Jing Liu, her, her, her hits come at more staggered intervals. So you've got your burst burst hit, you've got her skill hit, and whereas Dan, Young, Dan Hung's burst doesn't really do all that much damage, it's really all about that fully enhanced autos. So what that means is when you're fighting in multi-wave content, I think Jing Liu has an inherent advantage because Dan Hung is basically a nuker. So against bosses, this doesn't matter very much because, you know, whether you do your damage in multiple instances or in one big nuke, it's not a big deal. But when you're fighting multi-wave content, I think Jing Liu has the advantage. Obviously, it's not all upside because she does have a, a specific damage window that can she do damage. It's only during her spectral enhanced state, whatever it is, where she um, can't use her auto attack and her skills don't consume skill points but she doesn't give skill points either so it's sort of just a neutral hit which means you do have to be aware of her skill point management you can't just absolutely go ham it's not like it's not quite as like good as blade where it enhances his basic attack so that he's more skill point positive at least i think that's how blade works let me know if i'm wrong about how blade works i don't have him but it basically makes her a little bit closer to skill point neutral because she's not neutral she does take one skill point to get into her spectral state if you start the battle with her skill and then she takes two skills if you don't so that means that if 
if you don't have quite enough speed, like I only have 130 speed, then it can feel like it actually takes a really long time to get out of your downtime window. It's really good for the first turn, the first rotation, because you enter the battle already with a spectral stack. So you only need to use your skill once. But once you run out of that first state, you have to use two skills to get back into it. And then it can feel, you really notice the downtime. I think during certain boss fights, this matters less. And during certain boss fights, it matters more. Like if you can finish off an enemy while out of your state and then start the next wave closer to being in your state, like if you can time things like that, I could see her edging out um, other DPSs. And if you can't, like if you get really bad timings, I could see her being down. So there's a bit of a pros and cons there. Um, I know people also talk a lot about her buffing timings, like keeping buffing. I've only used her with Ting Yun and with Silver Wolf in terms of buffers and debuffers. I haven't tried to use her with Yong. I haven't tried to use her with Asta. Um, and I haven't really used her with Pella because I don't have her leveled up. I know most people will be using her with Pella. It's not the biggest deal that I haven't used her with Pella though, because Pella debuffs the enemies. So she'll be very good at always making sure your enemies are debuffed. Silver Wolf, I'm, as long as my team is sufficiently skill point managed properly, like I'm managing them properly, skill, Silver Wolf is no problem. And also Ting Yun is no problem. I found it very easy to play around and make sure that you just have to, it's something you do have to be aware of though. You, you don't, it, it's one of the few characters that you don't just spam her skill on cooldown because sometimes if you use her skill, your Jing Liu is not going to quite be in her spectral state again. And so you'll need to auto attack an extra turn and then skill in the next rotation. So that's something to keep in mind as well. The final thing I'll say, and this is very, very important. Her damage is very, very front loaded. It's very loaded into that one instance. And that is very powerful because if you're able to end the battle and clear out the boss's HP at the end of that state, her damage is averaged out over including her downtime. So if you can end the battle and get all of your um, DPS down at the end of her first state, you're essentially cheating the game out of those downtime turns, which is extremely valuable. I think people will come to realize that if you're able to nuke them down in that state and you're able to front load your damage that much, like you, even if there's another boss after that, like there's two waves of enemies and not a wave of enemies, but if there's two, um, those two enemies that are, you fight one and then you fight another one in the same, the same area. I don't even, that could be very, very valuable in having her one cycle or two cycle bosses and just cheating out extra turns that other characters wouldn't be able to do because, you know, Dan Hung's damage is essentially sustained over a long period of time where every time you use, every time it's his turn, he does a ton of damage. Whereas Jing Liu does a ton of damage for certain windows. And so if you can make those windows line up, you can blast the enemies and and cheat and cheat out higher damage than her overall average damage would help you believe, would let you believe. But I think for that reason, it's possible that, you know, she might even outclass the other DPSs because of that feature, but we'll just have to, I think you'll we'll have to wait and see more testing first before we can make that call. But I just think that it is noteworthy to have that potential there. In overall power and damage, I think they feel about the same. And I think that that makes sense given that, you know, I have her signature light cone. I don't have Dan Hung. If I ha if I was a betting man, I would say that her light cone, and we know how good, it, how good the light cone is, she's probably a bit worse than Dan Hung without the light cone and maybe about the same, maybe a bit better depending on the content you're fighting if she does have the light cone. One thing I would like to say is that I tested her both with more of a hyper offense comp as well as dual sustain with Lynx and Natasha, which she was still able to clear and, and to match the DPS of my other characters or get pretty close anyways with the double sustain. So that was something, you know, something nice. She was, what I'm saying is she's a lot less reliant on buffs than other characters. Like if you have to go double sustain to sustain her, obviously it's not optimal, right? But that goes to show that she's very self-sufficient. And so that if you end up in the future, you know, not needing the self-sustain, one of those units can be their own damage dealer or their own buffer. And so she maybe has a much higher floor and just a slightly higher ceiling than some of the other characters. So Overall, I find her single target performance very impressive. I find her AOE. So her AOE is not as good as Kafka. She her her, her burst damage, like her blast damage, it feels pretty similar to Dan Hung. And but I would prefer Kafka when I'm fighting large amounts of AOE. And the current, at least the content that I've been fighting, does have some AOE on some of the sides. So it is really nice to have some someone like Kafka to cover that whole realm. Because when you have like five, six enemies across there, you know, you don't really want to be using Dan Hung to use multiple turns to take them out one by one. Same with Zila or not one by one, but three by three, I guess. Um, and then and Jing Liu is even slightly worse at that. I mean, I, I'd say she's about the same as Dan Hung, about the same as Zila, but Kafka just kind of takes the cake when you're in full AOE. I also really, really like her freeze. Her technique is super, super nice to have because some enemies will just come out the gate swinging. And so to be able to delay that for a turn with the freeze is really, really nice and useful. I really, really like that. Now, in terms of recommendations, if you already have Dan Hung, like I can't in good faith recommend Jing Liu unless you're just looking for that ice DPS and I will
will say, even though I have Silver Wolf, even though I have Zila, even though I have Kafka, even though I have Dan Hung, having that ice, I I, I underrated it a little bit. Because when you're heading into the Forgotten Hall, like you're not always gonna be able to fit Silver Wolf in super easily because Silver Wolf is more of a single target character. And so when you're fighting, you know, three enemies that all have the ice weakness and you're just making one of them ice, it's not it's not so great. Like it's not it's not horrible, but it's not so great either. Um, because of Jing Liu's ice typing, I was able to full star this final chamber, uh, which I never have been able to before because her ice typing just gave me such an advantage against against the ascended ascended boss. And this was even with Dan Hung um, having his attack percent rope. I did play this before with Dan Hung with the attack percent rope and I used Kafka on the first side and Kafka couldn't quite cut it. Really close, but couldn't quite cut it. Jing Liu's single target damage was able to make the difference. Granted, I do have a higher idol on Ting Yun now. I wonder if that made the difference. Let me just quickly test that star because Jing Liu, like Kafka was just barely able to do it with um, with just one cycle remaining and Jing Liu was also, but I wasn't using an attack percent rope or um, Dan Hong. I was using nothing. And I think, and so overall, you know, Jing Liu had the stronger clear, maybe one, maybe one or two um, turns ahead of Kafka. That doesn't mean that I'm saying that Jing Liu is better, just that Jing Liu, is, this, this, um, this particular boss just lends himself better to Jing Liu because it's a single target, whereas Kafka's strength is AoE. So it, it makes sense. That's what, that's what we should expect uh, from this scenario. So overall, you know, what does this mean for you? You know, does this mean that, you know, Jing Liu is the next, you know, best DPS and you should be going out and getting her because she's the best DPS? No, um, no, it doesn't. I think it's pretty clear that in terms of the limited five stars, whether we look at Jing Liu, um, whether we're looking at Kafka, whether we're looking at Dan Hung, or whether we're looking at Zila, they all have their need. I think Dan Hung and Jing Liu, maybe they're a slightly a tiny bit better overall because although Zila, maybe she outpaces in single target, it's not worth the restrictiveness that her that her resurgence proc is met with. Like if you can't get her proc, then her value goes down a lot. Whereas Jing Liu and Dan Hung are much more universal. And whereas Kafka, she's more of the queen of AoE. So yeah, I think that if you, I, I would go for one of either Jing Liu and Dan Hung. I wouldn't get both just un unless, unless you just want that elemental coverage because they're both so close and they both basically have the same niche. Maybe Jing Liu is slightly better. Maybe Dan Hung is slightly better. I would still tend to say that Jing Liu is a bit worse without her light cone based on the math that I'm seeing. Jing Liu is slightly worse without her light cone slightly and maybe about the same or slightly better if they both have their light cone. So if I were to make an account recommendation, I would get one of either Jing Liu or Dan Hung for your single target slash bursty type damage. I don't think you need someone like Zila. Like the single target's great, but I think that the single target from Jing Liu and Dan Hung is enough. And then you get someone who's good in, in big AoE, I think for the long term, someone like Kafka or maybe that new, uh, maybe that new erudition guy that they just teased. Maybe he's going to be really cracked out and he's going to be a good alternative to Kafka. I don't know. I do think it's valuable to have lots of different elements. So having Jing Liu for ice, having Dan Hung for imaginary, it is nice. It is nice and valuable. But I think you can compensate enough with Silver Wolf. And especially if you just crack out your DPSs, it, I, I'm interested to see if like I know that it's pretty that the memory of chaos is not like it's not it's not a joke, but it's not super hard and that most people are able to full start. I'm just a bit behind on my farming from because I, I didn't play for a little while. I took a break. And right now it seems like the caliber of DPSs that they're releasing are higher than or they're higher than the content that we're facing so no need to go for light cones no need to go for tons and tons of characters you're still able to wish for your favorites as long as you build them well and build good teams for them so i'm, I'm happy i'm excited um let me know your thoughts on jing liu i i i, I give her like I'm, I'm very happy with her i think that if, if you love her then she's gonna be awesome so make sure to get her if you play genshin impact i cover it much more in depth than i do star rail on this channel because i build and test every single character so i have a much better idea of everything that goes on in, in Genshin. Although I, I do know a lot about Star Rail, but I'm very, very well versed in Genshin. So if you play that, come and check me out there. Subscribe here if you want to see more. You can check out my Jing Liu pulls at the card over there. If you want to support me on Patreon, then check out the link over there. And for all of those you do, thank you very, very much. You're what keeps me being able to make content full time. And if you don't want to do any of that, that's totally fine. Just watching the video has been more than enough. Thanks so much. Bye for now.